we're back. Hey everybody, Brandon here, and we are back with a region review of the Solympia region by Poketubing icon Birdkeeper Toby. This was a region that Toby made back in 2021, and there isn't really any particular place that it is based on, though there are some Grecian elements to the character designs, region, and some of the Pokemon. As many of you may know, Toby is actually leaving YouTube at the end of this year, so this video is kind of meant as a as a send-off, as, as an appreciation to Birdkeeper Toby, and all he's done for the Poketubing community. I'll be giving some more heartfelt sentiments at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and jump into this region with our grass starter, Twiguana which is just a freaking perfect name. I love that name so much. According to its dex entry, this Pokemon was thought to be extinct, but was found on Solympia and was actually thriving. And I just think that's so cool. Like a, a Pokemon that was thought to be long gone is like revived in the eyes of the public. As far as design goes, it hits a lot of the kind of typical first stage starter Pokemon, um, especially the modern ones where it's big head, little body kind of thing going on. I think it has just one too many elements for a base stage though. You have the stripes and then the coconuts and then the rock head and the leaves. Um, you know, starter Pokemon typically don't have a, a bunch of elements. You know, they usually have one kind of feature um, that is like the main part of their design. And Pokemon in general usually have like one or two main features to their design. Um, like, I think uh, if you're going to maybe strip this back a little bit, you would probably have, like, either keep the rock head and remove, like, the, you know, coconut. I don't know if there's supposed to be coconuts, or but kind of coconut theming, theming here. Or maybe strip down the stripes a little bit. Or make the top thing have, like, a stripe instead of being a literal rock. I know it becomes a rock type later in its, its line. And, you know, the whole prehistoric, thought to be extinct thing. Uh, kind of plays into the rock typing with the fossil Pokemon. Keep in mind, these reviews are just what I think and what I would do. This is just my subjective opinion. Uh, th I don't think my word is law here. I think Toby did an amazing job with this region, um, and uh, everything I'm going to say is done with love. I'm, I'm not coming for you, Toby. I, I promise. I love you. <laughs> My design opinion usually falls into the less is more category. So obviously my, you know, with this, there's a lot of elements to it. So I'm going to be wanting to remove things, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad design. It's a good design. It is a good design. And that's not what I'm trying to say is that uh, anything I say in here is not saying that like, oh, this is a bad design because it's saying like, oh, here's what I think and what how I would have handled this situation. One thing to also keep in mind is I have watched Pokemon Tempest and I have watched the entire series in its entirety, but it was a, you know, two years ago when it was premiering that I watched the whole thing. So my memory on every little design de detail and choice might not be as, you know, uh, uh, keen as they once were. Next, we have the evolution of Twiguana. Twiguana? Twiguana? Twiguana is so hard. The double, the double, you know, W sound, the double W sound. It's tough to say. Anyway, we have a Guanagoon here, which is now a grass rock type. Apparently, there's somewhat of a bully to other grass types, which is kind of crazy to think of like a that kind of relationship between grass types, like being studied. It's just like, oh, this guy is kind of a jerk. <laughs> It's really interesting the way that this Pokemon is posed because it almost feels like, and, and like design wise too, because it almost feels like if you like removed its legs, it would very easily look like a snake Pokemon. I guess that's just lizards in general, but I, but, but specifically this one, like the striping, do you, do you know what I'm saying? I don't, maybe I'm, maybe I'm being dumb. Knowing what the final evolution looks like, I can definitely say that this is like a good middle stage, a good lead in to what the idea uh, of the next one's gonna be. Though one thing I will say is like, I think a lot of the middle stages kind of get that treatment that is just like, this is, you know, the in-between where, you know, we have the reboots and the septiles of the world where like they still feel like a natural bridge between the base stage and the final stage, but kind of have a power, kind of have a personality all their own. I think the personality comes through it through the dex entry, not necessarily through the design. Like, you know, if, you know, the being more, uh, 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 bullyish and stuff like that. Maybe there could have been, I don't know, some kind of element to the design to display that it's kind of a bully. Um, maybe, you know, and it's, it says it's the goonish Pokemon, so maybe some kind of traditional goon element. I don't know. This is just me thinking on the fly. But finally, we have Chlorodon, the legacy Pokemon. I think this Pokemon is pretty epic. I mean, like, you have these, like, freaking diamond, like, shanks. <laughs> shanks. What a, what a term to use. But it's, it's like they're little, little daggers, I guess. Like little diamond daggers coming out of its fist and its tail is really cool. This kind of swoop that it has at the top, like the, the, the diamond swoop that it has, I feel like kind of applies to that thing I was talking about with, with Iguanagoon, is that like the, that, that swoop of hair is that, you know, uh, a pompadour, as it were, um, kind of evokes the, the, you know, the Yankee or, or, or a uh, Boncho kind of thing going on there where, you know, the traditional thug kind of characters, um, I feel like could apply really well to Iguanagoon, who's supposed to be this kind of bully character. Next, we move on to the fire starter, Emble. This guy is like so cute. Like definitely my choice, definitely my choice for this region. I think it's just, 
so freaking adorable. Also, the pun of ember plus bull is just like perfect. It's got that like, it's just, you know, ember, embol. It kind of has that like that natural flow to it. Embol evolves into Brazian, a fire ground type. I really like the addition of this kind of hardened earth around its, you know, feet and backside. They feel like a very natural placements to it. it while, like kind of like feeling like a, like a fur pattern without being a fur pattern and being the literal element of earth. One tiny little detail I would change is the little fire on the side. Um, it kind of doesn't feel intentional with it. It just, it like, it kind of just feels like a little, like a little pattern, but like there's no other parts of that pattern. It's just like this one dot there. And so either I would cover it up or add another one or add a few more specs somewhere in there just so it feels like a bit more intentional with with that fire placement because like you have the lines on this head which feel very intentional um, and I know that this is carryover from Embol which did have the fire on the side but you know as it evolves you know you got this ground element take that ground element cover it up or re retract the ground element a little bit so that we have these more more focused finally we move on to Minotaur which is just a perfect name like Minotaur plus tar brilliant i mean look at this thing you can you can see why i chose it i mean it's so epic like and also the fact that it's this whole line is based on a like a torture device is is crazy to me like <laughs> but it really does come together very well i just really like all the elements of it um the the tar element is such a unique way of presenting the ground type that i really like my only little note is a color detail i think that the color of the tar and the color of the fur is just a tiny bit too close to each other so i'd kind of lighten the fur to make the tar stand out just a little bit more but that's it i think it's a really solid design pretty much all around next we have kinfisher our water starter this to me is my favorite base stage because it feels so much like what a water you know water bird starter would be like water starters typically have a lot of blue in their design and this one does too but it also has this striking orange going down the middle of it which really breaks it up and orange and blue are complementary to each other so it just really works well kinfisher evolves into Hirona which is a solid design I the kind of like back feathers it has here remind me of helioptile or or heliolisk uh because of just the, the shape of them I'm not sure if that was intentional I can't remember if Toby said something about that my only my only really gripe about this is that it's it just feels too big for a middle stage like I know it's supposed to be based on a heron and the final stage is pretty big too but like this feels too big for a middle stage I would have like shrunk down the, the proportions a little bit more so that they feel a little bit more compact middle stagey um because it just yeah it feels kind of like a final evolution and Heronin evolves into Washido here which is such a solid design I really like the posing of it honestly when I first saw this I thought it was going to be like part steel type because like the coloration kind of lightens when it uh, when it evolves as well as the, that beak just looks like it is a sword you know I know that's kind of the point it's supposed to be like kind of a sword master but um I don't know I felt like steel type was a really natural fit though we already do have a water steel type starter which makes sense and we don't have a water flying starter so and my comment about Heronin being really tall and this one being kind of bigger I kind of feel like the proportions could have been flipped a little bit I know the pose is supposed to kind of evoke a sword master and stuff like that but as far as proportions go this one feels almost the exact same as Heronin um and so it like kind of feels like not as much of a step up as far as far as evolution goes um because Heronin has a lot of the same elements as Washido um but Washido is it like, has a color change and then like a pose change but like if you pose them similarly I feel like they would feel a little too similar as far as evolution goes not to say that like Pokemon evolution can't be like super similar I mean look at Minchino and Sinchino it's just when it comes to starters I feel like there needs to be like a little bit more of a step up that's why that's just my personal opinion that being said Washido is actually like a close second to me as far as what I wanted my starter to be going through this Olympia region like this is a very solid final stage for a water starter do not get me wrong I really do enjoy this design the pose feels really epic it feels offensive and defensive at the same time it has that kind of Asia slash thing going on to it anyway we finally move on to our traditional root one bug which which is Barbug. These are based on these little fuzzy enemies from Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, which is one of my favorite Zelda games, so of course I love this design. It's a really interesting take on a Route 1 bug Pokemon. It has that bug poison type, which is kind of traditional for a lot of Route 1 bugs, um, but it also is Cyclopsian, which is so different. Like, I love it also it has this, like, big old smirk. I don't know if that's, like, a, a part of its, 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 like, actual mouth or if it's just a part of the design, but it kind of gives it this little sinister grin, which I think is cool. It just kind of gives the feeling of a munchy little guy, you know, that alien hominid effect, if you know that reference. Barbug evolves into Hip Hopper, which I feel like should be the mascot for like hoops and hip hop. It is a bug steel type, and you can definitely tell with these like big chomping jaws. It is, it is a munchy guy. It's just munching in a different way. I think it's interesting how these jaws are supposed to be like the thing that evokes the steel type for them. 
but ultimately they're just appendages that are not really used. They're just more for like a scare tactic than anything. And the final stage is Hypmothic, which I think is a stellar name. Also, I love mods. Um, mods are awesome. Um, I used to be afraid of them, but then like I kind of realized how beautiful they are and the, the, the fear went away. It's, it's really interesting. It's a flying bug type, which I don't quite agree with. <laughs> I think changing from a poison to a steel to a flying type is like, it's kind of a, it kind of screws with the move set, if you know what I mean. It's like now they get like, they have poison type moves that don't really do as much damage and now they have steel type moves that don't really do much. So I feel like I would have either kept it pu bug poison the entire time or kept it or, or kept this be bug steel or something along those lines. I, there's not really been a Pokemon that changes type each thing just from a I think a logistical standpoint as far as move sets and, and and like kind of that that idea not to say it can't be done maybe pokemon will do that one day also i feel like its name is hypnotic but it's a flying type i feel like i would have made it psychic unless they unless T toby did in post or something like that but I, I feel like i feel like psychic if it's you know a hypnotic pokemon i feel like it should you know hyp hypnotism is is like this it's like psychics domain again forgive me if like toby has explained this already and i just forgot um and, like i said it's been two years Next, we have the Route 1 Bird, which is Corvidae, a flying ghost type, which is such a cool type combination for a Route 1 Bird. I shouldn't say Route 1 Bird is more so early Route Bird. I, I said Route 1 is just kind of like lodged into my brain. That's kind of like been like the design pattern for forever until freaking Paldea came in and was like, nope. This coloration for a ghost type is sick. The, the design is simple and effective. I really like it. It kind of has like Raven elements, a little bit of, 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 uh, of vulture elements. I think it's just solid all around, really simple and effective. I like the beak. It kind of reminds me of Toucan a little bit, but like in a good way. Corvidae evolves into Samorg, which is also another solid Pokemon. Uh, this was inspired by the Helmarok King, um, but as well as I think something from D and D if I recall correctly, um, but just, beautiful design i think it is a little too grand for a for a, you know an early root bird evolution I it feels legendary to me when i look at this i feel like this is like a fourth uh uh you know legendary bird you know what i mean like this could be the the ghost legendary bird or something like that that doesn't take away from the fact this is a really solid and really cool design the posing is on point um i think the inspirations are really fun uh, and the coloration is simple and effective. They got those purples and the golds against each other, which are really nice. Uh, it blended in with the white, really solid. I'm dumb. That isn't the root one bird, I, or unless there's two root one birds. But I, this is the root one bird. It's Capon. Uh, duh, I forgot about Capon. That's like a whole story point. This dude's cute. He's very simple. He's just a little chick, kind of giving Torchic a vibes without like the fire element to it. It's like, it's like screw you. Untorches your chick. <laughs> it's so stupid. Its design is very cute and endearing and definitely something you'd want to catch uh, and have on your team because, you know, that Route 1 bird sometimes, or I guess I should say most of the time, is something you bring with you the entire way through your journey. Next we have Scrapter, and I believe this is the male form, and that name is brilliant. Such amazing pun. Amazing pun. When you can perfectly entangle two words together, it's just, that's just so Pokemon. It's, it's just so Pokemon. <laughs> that being said, Talonflame also exists. So I really like the design choices here. The coloration is very cool. I, I really like the mixtures of the kind of uh, aqua dark blue with the orange and red very much pops. The wing hands being smaller and the legs being bigger very much evokes a theropod, um, which gives a double meaning to the whole raptor thing coming from both a raptor as in like the, you know, velociraptor and a raptor as in a bird of prey. Just adding extra layers to that scraptor name, which is just perfect. And we have the female form, which feels more in line actually with Capon's design. Surprisingly enough, I feel like the male form takes a pretty big leap from the initial design, but you can see the elements of Capon within the female form. It has those dots. It still feels kind of cute and endearing despite being a final stage also i just noticed this both the scraptors have this design pattern on the legs that looks like the wrap of bandages like the kind of like bandages that fighters wear which solid solid designs decision and it's subtle which is cool because like chicken's legs already look like that naturally i'm not sure if these are supposed to be chicken legs i should say bird legs in general kind of look like this naturally we move on to pop oil which is a water flying type and this this was tad bulb before tad bulb existed can we just be real can we just be so real pop oil walked so tad bulb could flounder furiously if, if no one knows, I, I don't like Tadbulb and Bellybulb. I, I, I just don't. Giving this Pokemon Delta Stream is probably the, like, wildest thing to me. Just this little itty-bitty, like, balloon tadpole thing getting, like, <laughs> getting, like, 
Mega Rayquaza's ability is so funny to me. Also, the idea that Kinfisher really love to prey on these guys. Like, they pop, they pop them. That's sad, actually. It's like popping a balloon, you know? Or those balloons that just kind of sail away into the distance and you're like, oh man. This has nothing to do with the design. I just, I'm reminiscing now. <laughs> the design is very cute though. And I think like this, the color choices were really good. Uh, the, the green with the, the cream and the orange, it all feels very welcoming and cute. It evolves into Amphibolimp, which is a mouthful. <laughs> it's, whoa. Uh, it's, it's good though. I like, I like the, like Amphibolimp, like, you know, amph I, it almost looks like Amphibolimp. Amphib, 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 Amphib. Uh, I'm having too much fun. Um, anyway, uh, I like the, uh, carryover of the kind of more balloony elements, like kind of the, 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 um, what's the word? Uh, when frogs ribbit, this part, I can't remember what it's called. There's a, there's a word for it. I can't remember it. Anyway, that element playing into a flying typing for a frog, I think is super fun and a unique take on the flying type. I like the big bulbs coming out the sides, but I almost wanted like it to come out here, you know, like it's like floating, you know, like by its thing, you know, how, how ridiculous would that look? You just see a frog floating, but it's like thing. It's just like, help, help. Regardless, it does carry over well from pop oil. I keep wanting to say poi pole because it's just like one letter switching away. It's like poi pole and then pop oil. Anyway, yeah, it carries over well. The coloration carries over well, as well as the concept itself carries into this, this, you know, inflating frog. Next we have Salivite, which is probably one of the more creepy designs of this region. <laughs> it's so interesting. It's one of those kind of like Wobbuffet ideas, but like more forefront. It's like Wobbuffet, its actual body is the tail and then the, the thing above it is the, uh, is when you're, what you're hitting is supposed to be hit. That's like, that's what it wants you to hit. It doesn't want you to hit its tail. I believe this is based on an enemy from Twilight Princess. I might be incorrect in that as well. Um, but, uh, the, the thing to me, the, the little thing coming out of the mouth, Always looks like a blooper from like Super Mario Sunshine to me. That's like that's what it looks like to me, and I can't get it out of my brain. It just looks like it's a blooper coming out of this in insect's mouth. Salivite evolves into Zevolve, which honestly, a Zelda-based Pokemon evolving into an alien-based Pokemon was definitely not on my bingo card, but I'm not complaining. Bug Psychic also a really cool type for like in more alien Pokemon. Psychic kind of deals in the realm of space and the cosmos and stuff like that. That's why we'll never really have a cosmic type. Also, the arms are almost in the a position of what wings would be, so it kind of looks like these wings that come forward and become arms, which is infinitely creepier but also very fitting for an alien-based Digimon. Digimon? Digimon, where am I? Pokemon. Next, we have Solympian Vigoroth, which I thought was Vigroth for the longest time. I thought it was V-I-G-R-O-T-H, not the other spelling, and I don't know why. Regardless of that, I think this is really fun. I like the idea of kind of flipping Slacking and, uh, and Vigoroth on their heads. Like, you know, Slackoth goes from this lazy dude to a super hyper dude to another lazy dude which honestly like same you know <laughs> i also really enjoyed the grass type being applied through the idea of sloths growing moss on their back like because they move so slow um that that just happens in nature and i think when that's applied through the lens of pokemon whether it's a regional form or brand new pokemon it always turns out pretty freaking cool it almost looks like vigoroth is sick in a way you know how in like cartoons or even anime like when someone's sick they have that kind of like blue that comes over their head or, or, or something like that, that kind of blue tone. Um, it's th that, that, but green. There's one tiny thing I'll comment on, and the hair, it's kind of like straight line pattern thing. Like the rest of the, the kind of green is blended, but this one area is just not, and that just, that just bothers me. <laughs> I don't know why, it just does. I feel like it should like, you know, kind of have that, like that fading into each other, but this one little part doesn't, and I, I just don't know why. Obviously, next we have Solympian Slacking, which is standing up. I think it it doesn't seem as energetic as Vigoroth, but it definitely is like up there. It's like, oh, you know what? I'm not laying down anymore. And now it has that green fully incorporated into its design. And I, I like the little frumpy kind of hairdo it has. I think that's really fun. My little comment on this is I just feel like you could probably remove the belly pattern on this and it would be fine. Like I think or or, or like amplify it a little bit more and make it more spread out through the design or or like make it bigger. Uh, something like that because like just just being here it just doesn't feel like it's really adding anything next we have cyrox a rock fighting type and i just love this design 
a lot of people wanted an evolution for it, myself included, which Toby did later give spoilers in uh, in the Legends version of his project, um, which we will be reviewing here in this on this thing as well, at, just at the end, because I wanted to uh, get through the base version and then do the Legends version after. One of my favorite elements of this design is the coloration, because of this gold and black coloration, it's very simple, but really cool. Black against most colors is like when, when like black it takes the back seat. It's just always really cool to me. Maybe that's like black is one of my favorite colors as well as like red is my favorite color and black is one of my like second favorite colors. So like this has red, black, and gold in it, which is just awesome. <laughs> Next up we have Rataru, a pure fighting type, and I love this design. It's so cute. It is adorable. It almost feels like it could be a Pika clone with its proportions. Um, though there is a Pika clone that we'll talk about later. It just has all the right things going for it. I mean, its coloration is really solid and leads into its evolution really well, which its evolution is even more adorable somehow. Usually when Pokemon evolve, they become less adorable, but this one becomes more adorable. The kind of neck floof it has coming down into the fur pattern, feeling like a fighter pilot jacket is just so cool, but it's like so simple, but you can see the inspiration, which is so Pokemon. Like usually Pokemon will have some kind of design element, that's more hidden, but when you look closer, you can see, oh, that's what that is. That is one of my favorite parts of Pokemon, and it's something I try to implement in my designs. Rotoru evolves into a Rodent, which such a solid name. <laughs> oh, the puns in this region are so good. Uh, uh, Toby did a great job with the naming of these, these Pokemon. It is a fighting flying type, and a fighting flying type mouse Pokemon is so unique and so like such a different take. I will say, I did not know that it had a little nose here. For some reason, I think maybe because I was so far away from my screen or like I was watching it on mobile or something like that. I just think I just thought it didn't have a nose straight up. I just thought it was one of those like kind of like, I don't know, Chrono Trigger feeling or Chrono Cross feeling uh, uh, creatures that, like that just didn't have a, a nose or even Fantasy Star. <laughs> I don't know. But the nose honestly makes it even cuter. That that being said, if the fact that I didn't notice it, maybe we should make the nose just like a little bit bigger. And upon evolution, the elements of the fighter pilot jacket have evolved with it. You know, it getting this like kind of more full on scarf, the headpiece coming down to kind of look like the uh the um like the helmet. The helmet? Is it the helmet or the the hat? What's the proper terminology? Either way, it has that that the fighter pilot thing helmet i guess um and then the ears coming around to look like plain this design all around is just so solid to me and i just it's one of my favorites of this region for sure just the idea of like a kangaroo mouse that jumps into the air and can soar is such a fun concept it, it's just so fun and that's like that's it's just pokemon it's just pokemon next we have pegasier which woo wowzer bowsers that is like this thing is like epic no matter what way you slice it. I mean, looking at this thing, it looks like something out of God of War to me, like honestly, like an enemy, like a boss enemy in God of War. I also really like that it's part fairy type because, you know, it acknowledges the genetic potential of the Ponyta line with Galarian Ponyta becoming a psychic fairy, or actually, no, it doesn't become psychic fairy. It is a uh, Rapidash that's psychic fairy. Um, so there's that genetic potential there. Uh, and so it acknowledges that it's kind of like a, a meeting of, of both worlds because, um, it also has that purple coloration to the flames, which is another part um, that uh, 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 Galarian Rapidash has as that purple mane. So it's kind of like a fusion of those two. It's a little bit like Pikachu from the collab that Toby and I did that maybe you should totally check out. Link in the card and description. Next up, we have Tridoom, a ghost fire type. Um, and I can't remember if this is a split evolution from Houndour or if this is an evolution to Houndoom um, or if it's like a it's supposed to be like a regional situation i can't remember but if it feels the long fan requested idea of houndoom getting itself a uh, uh like a three-headed version to acknowledge like the cerberus kind of inspiration one design detail that i noticed and i think is really cool is there's technically a fourth head to this pokemon if you notice here there's that symbol that's like looks like a skull that was on houndour and houndoom but it's been expanded a little bit to have these teeth and then the way that the fur pattern comes up makes it look like a mouth so it's like a full-on head like skeleton head now with the flames coming out of its eyes, leading into the other two heads, which is just, it's, it's such a solid little detail. I love little details like that. Next, we have Solympian Togepi, which is a fairy grass type. And I just sometimes, I, I know this is like, this is a thing that I do, but whenever grass is added to a Pokemon, for some reason, it becomes so cool. Like, I just like the idea of the Togepi is just hanging out in a little coconut. That's great. Is that supposed to be a coconut? It looks like a coconut. I can't remember if it's supposed to be a coconut. And now I'm feeling like I might have... No, is it a berry? 
It looks like it could be a berry. Am I forgetting? I don't know. Either way, it's cute. It's super cute. It's Togepi. It's Togepi. Of course it's cute. Next, we have Solympian Toga Tick, which, you know, kind of continues the same thing, but it's kind of even more bird-like than it was, like, a, 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 as a, um, as a normal Toga Tick. Because Toga Tick uh, feels like more of like a Cupid, slightly humanoid, slightly bird-like, but this one is like fully bird-like, um, which is kind of funny because, like, Toga Tick becomes Toga Kiss, which is like still semi bird like but not 100 percent bird like it still has that kind of like almost human face which is very like mythological anyway yeah the more bird like elements are at play here it almost looks like uh, uh toga tick's hair is like a chia pet which i think is fun it's definitely a coconut because i'm seeing the little little dots here um or it's a bowling ball and i've been completely wrong this entire time and for some reason bowling balls are grass type and finally, we have Solympian Togekiss. This Pokemon's category as the Jubilee Pokemon, you can definitely feel. Um, it feels very chill, but like really happy. It's just like so content with life. It's like, and it's got kind of almost like a surfer dude haircut. It's just like, yeah, man, we're on Solympio. What do we, what do we have to complain about? You know, <laughs> we got, we got it made, dude. This, 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 this Pokemon looks like it would say dude. Like it doesn't say Togekiss. It's just like, dude, 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 dude. It's kind of like the same thing as as Alolan Dugtrio. I will say the design feels like it has one too many like grass elements to it um, that to kind of differ from each other. Like you have these like, vine elements and then you have these leaves that are kind of this pattern. But then on the head, you have these different kind of leaves and then a bush. And then it just kind of like kind of feels uh, like the, the leaf elements need to be a little bit more cohesive. Next, we have Snows, which is kind of like the mascot Pokemon of Team Snooze. It's so cute. I just I really like honestly I could use a plushie of it, Toby. Kind of like when? When, man? When? Give me the plushie. Give it, give it to me. No, legitimately though, like this Pokemon is so adorable and it has like all of the fun little design tropes. Like a lot of Pokemon tend to show their eyes, but this one doesn't, which makes it even more endearing somehow. Snows evolves into Zlumber, which I just love that it's just like simply just changing the S to a Z. And and that just feel, it feels, it's fun to say Zlumber. I don't know. Um, I, I like that it's like, it's a mixture of slumber, um, Z's as in like, you know, uh, sleeping, but as also like lumbering around because now it's got these legs that it, you know, kind of lumbers around on. And that dex entry, I'm just, uh, that dex entry, man, like, I'm just saying, like, I want to sleep with a snows or a slumber and like, so that my dreams can be sweet and fulfilling. Make it, make it happen, Toby. Come on. We're all asking. <laughs> By we, I mean me. I'm asking, please. <laughs> oh, man. Next up, we have Dozermon, which is the final evolution. It's got that Sully feeling, that Monster Sink feeling, that that you just want to cuddle up with this guy. Um, even though he looks like he might crush your spine, you still want to cuddle with him. You know, that Totoro effect. It's funny because I mentioned Digimon earlier. And so, like, Dozermon sounds like it would be either, like, a bulldozer Digimon or a Digimon that sleeps. <laughs> because, like, most Digimon end in Mon, like Agumon, Gabumon, stuff like that. Dozermon is so relatable because it just feels like you after you like finally get that really good night's sleep. That's like that's what it feels like. You had a really nice dream. You wake up feeling well rested, which is a rarity nowadays. Um, and that's just it just feels like that's the like this is the epitome. Epitome? The epitome. Wow. The epitome of that. <laughs> Next up, we have Gulalabai. I think it's Gulalab. Is it Gulalabai? I think it, it, I can't remember if it's Gu or Gulalabai. Either way. Fairy ground type, which is a type combination we still have yet to get. And girl, she got legs for days. She is sissy in that walk all the way down the runway. We got we got that long ears that come down to look like curly hair. It's it, it's 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 such a gorgeous design. It's so cute and simple. Um, I like the the eye being a little bit different than uh, like traditional Pokemon eye, uh, eyes and like being more goat like, but not entirely goat like. I know I already commented on it, but the idea of these like like long ears coming down to be curly hair is so is so genius, and I love it so much. And then it becomes Seder Corn, and then uh, uh, girl, she's not sissy in that walk. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the design is bad. I just think it's funny that we go from this like beautiful, elegant Pokemon to this guy that's just like <laughs> to this Pokemon you really don't want to look at for too long because you're afraid of it looking into your eyes and piercing your soul. I really like the patterning on this Pokemon, like the diamonds on the side and the way the pink comes up from the ears. The ear is not even like being really curly anymore and kind of almost looking a little bit more disheveled and un untangled uh, or, or tangled, I guess I should say. Or like un uncurled is what I meant. Next, we have Solympian Alakazam, which is a psychic electric type. And I find this thing so cool. It like reminds me of like a Mind Flayer or something like that um, from D&D. 
Uh, and I think that's such an interesting and fun concept. Or, or, or even just like a, a wizard, just a wizard from D&D, like an old arcane wizard who specializes in lightning magic. But yeah, the way that headpiece comes down with like, it almost looks like tendrils coming down, like, like, like a mind flayer. Next up, we have Drudigoil, which Toby never specified what kind of Pokemon this is, whether it was a regional variant or an evolution or, or some kind of separate Pokemon. Uh, but essentially predicted convergent Pokemon. So good work, Toby. As we know with Sinistra, Pokemon can have the same type as their original Pokemon that they're quote unquote based on. So this does perfectly fall in line with being a convergent Pokemon. So maybe in the future, Toby, you can refer to it as such. I don't know if, I don't know if you have already, but there you go. Either way, this design is really, really solid. Haha, <laughs> cause it's a rock, it's a solid rock. Haha. <laughs> to me, it feels like wholly a rock monster. It doesn't even feel like there is kind of any biological element to it. It feels very much like Geodude in that way, where it just feels like a rock monster that has like a tongue for some reason. Um, and it just, it doesn't feel like it has that, like the Draconic element is still there and it makes sense why it has dragon typing, but it doesn't feel like it's a dragon animal. It feels like it's a flowing with Draconic energy. Does that make sense? You can kind of see from its skin and like all the spikes coming out of it. It just feels like it was like born out of a, a cave, like the cave, like just emerged out of the cave walls at some point this is kind of a niche reference but kind of like those rock monsters in the power rangers movie or they just kind of came out of the wall and started attacking them do people know that movie I am i too old probably next up we have go gopher which is the pika clone of the region and i do believe that it's this has been changed to ground electric type rather than steel electric type but this thing is just like an adorable little potato it's so cute you know, that's why the ground type makes sense for it. It's just like a little potato. It just feels like the potato experiment. I don't know if this was in the, the intentional. I can't, I can't remember if this was intentional, but Go Gopher feels like the little potato experiment where you like plug it in and it has electricity or whatever. Next up, we have Tenfin, which I love that name. Um, it is a water type, not water fire yet, um, but I really enjoy this, this thing's design. Like, I think the water fire type being exclusively owned by Volcanion is a dang shame. Um, and this Pokemon and its evolution kind of fulfilling that niche is really cool. This dude is so angry at me and I did nothing. I, I've done nothing. I've done nothing to this man. Why, why, why are you so angry at me? I will say it being pure water type, I feel with, in combination with the dex entry and the design, I feel like this could have been water fire type already, um, because it like spits fire and water. So it's like, why not like give it the fire typing to kind of accent that like ability, you know, unless that's exactly what steam lung does. I can't remember. Honestly, I can't remember what the ability does, but if that's what it does, then sorry. Also, I just read the deck entry, and yeah, the reason that he can't, he just looks angry is because he has no friends because there's really no other water fire types aside from other Tempin. There's only one water fire type, Volcanion. He'd probably, he'd probably be his friend. I'll be your friend, Tempin. Next, we have Temferno, and this is the fire water type. Uh, finally, uh, it also has, uh, it's interesting that its hidden ability is Steam Lung. Temfin doesn't have a hidden ability, so how would it get the hidden ability? Unless, I guess, I guess you're hunting for Temferno exclusively. I'm not sure if that Temferno is a Pokemon you can get on its own, because then that would make sense for you to be able to get its hidden ability. Um, but if it's only you can get Temfin to evolve them, then that wouldn't make Anyway, this design is awesome. I love the idea of this kind of like Leviathan Pokemon, the sea serpent. Kind of reminds me of like the, the sea serpents from Avatar The Last Airbender. It kind of having steam vents coming out of its body, um, evolving from this little fish Pokemon, kind of the Magikarp Gyarados effect, um, evolving from this little small fish Pokemon into this raging beast. I, I, I That's like one of my favorite design tropes of Pokemon. Pokemon is just like this weak little guy, little meek guy evolving into this beast. You know, we have Wimpod, we have Magikarp, we have Feebas, we have all these like examples of it happening. I feel like this dude would be solid for like opening up a hot springs business. If like you could tame a Temperno, you could like open up your own like natural hot springs and just have like a Temperno hanging out below the surface. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like way below the surface. Next up we have Sarah Surf, which I, love this is cute it's supposed to be based on sea angels which we do have manaphy which is already based on sea angels but this is such a different take that's like it's fine there are so many pokemon that are just like the same concept but just done in a different way it is water fairy type and it has liquid voice which that's you know our other water fairy type that we have is is a uh, pre marina which also has liquid voice so that makes sense i would say it makes it a little less unique in in that way because it's like you know uh you're giving the same ability to the same type combination um but that's you know that's fair it's it's what it, it is what it is it's all subjective this is not even none of this is real i also like the idea of it being like a guardian angel pokemon like i just that's fun it's just like hey you got a sarah surf watching out for you you're, you're set next up we have flamingo which was based on a kind of a joke um it, it, you know the, uh, putting you know flame plus flamingo is the flamingo that's it was kind of based on that joke but um 
still better than Flamigo. <laughs> I'm just saying, at least it looks really cool. Like if you're gonna have a Flamingo Pokemon that changes one letter to make it a Pokemon, at least it's this. I mean, the idea of a Flamingo being like this kind of fire elemental is just really cool to me. Cause like, yeah, this, 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 it's like, it kind of looks like it could be part of its plumage, but at the same time, it's just like literal fire, which is really fun. I kind of like when, uh, with, when Pokemon play with the literal elements that they're embodying. Next we have Panthenum, which is based on a lionfish. It's poison water type. I think it's solid. I think the idea of making a lionfish look like a literal lion is just so fun. I just, I just really do. I just do. My only comments on this is that I wish that the brown was white instead, um, because I feel it would have made that red, uh, the reds and the purples of this design pop a lot more. Uh, the brown feels like kind of muddies down that that red, and in in sequence kind of muddies down the the purple. Also, with that coloration, it would kind of be like Periwinkle from Blue's Clues, and that would make my inner child happy. Next, we have Shrilp, which, what is there to say about Shrilp that has not already been said? It is amazing. The idea of a ghost shrimp that like has its body being translucent so that it only you know only see the skull fantastic it also kind of feels like what are those enemies from uh wind waker that are just the skulls i think they're called bubbles are they called bubbles i can't remember but yeah it feels like that like you would just see this floating skull in the water and you'd be like ah but it's actually just a shrimp like for real the like texturing on this design like and, and like the way that you can make it look like it's like almost like well it kind of looks like it's made of bubbles uh the way that like they they uh what's the word highlighted the parts of this design next up we have draken and honestly like where's she go where where where'd she go i'm i'm on something today i don't know draken is a dark dragon type and it is great i think like the idea of a kraken mixed with a dragon and or like the or drake becoming a draken um also has that kind of mind flayer energy to it I think it's really epic, really cool. Um, it feels like it's, it, it, it also feels like it could be a legendary Pokemon, if I'm being honest. It feels like it has that that level of uh, uh, um, like grandeur to it. The one thing that kind of wish for this design is that the wings were more incorporated with the tentacle aspect um, because like we have so many tentacles going on here. I feel like two of them could have come out um, and then had the wings come down from those instead because right now it kind of feels like the, the wings the wings do feel like a part of it but at the same time it's like there's wings coming out of the back of an octopus which you know pokemon's done crazier things but um i that that's pr my personal thing is like you have these tentacles that have the, the tentacle coming up and these little buds i feel like you could have had the little spindly um like uh, what are those called the parts of the wings you know come down out of those and then like been a part of that that may, maybe that would have been too much for the design that's just me picturing it in, in my head that could have also not worked out and maybe you tried that already who knows next up we have scarecrews which i think is a pretty solid name i think i like the you know use of the o's to kind of come into each other it's you know it's 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 this oozing hay bale is, is it a hay bale or it's, it's kind of like a bush of hay um that's supposed to be kind of like a scarecrow mixing in some venom elements in there it says that it was brought to life by an ancient population or ancient peoples um and that it infests these hay bales but does it really say why um, like what, what do, what do these, this virus get out of, you know, inhabiting these hay bales of, or do they get a sense of protection? Do they, um, do, like, do they, is this the only way they can feel complete? Um, is it way, a way of sustaining their life? Like they can't survive without the hay bales. Um, you know, uh, what, what's, what's the distinction there? Cause right now it kind of just feels like two elements put together. Um, and there's like kind of no lore surrounding why exactly they uh, they are together. Next up, we have Hermite, which is a rock ghost type, another type we have yet to see in the actual games. Um, I like this being a reference to like the Gen 1 uh, ghost, like the missing no kind of thing going on. Obviously with its name, it embodies some hermit crab like elements to it too, which is also cute. I had a hermit crab, um, it, like we had a class hermit crab when I was younger and we all loved that thing. Then we have Hermite's like kind of roaming form when it doesn't have like a shell, kind of like a hermit crab when it doesn't have a shell and it's looking for a new one or it's sizing up and stuff like that. Um, I don't see how it's still part rock type. I feel like this form maybe should just be pure ghost because, um, you know, there's no really rock it's inhabiting. Um, kind of like, like, I feel like there's an ability that does that where like it loses its, um, fire typing. I think that might be heat crash where it loses its fire typing momentarily or something like that. This kind of could kind of be like that, except it just it's different form. I mean, multiple forms have had different typings for forever. So it's like, like it's unheard of. Next up, we have Kabutops. <laughs> Yet another reference to missing node this time in its Kabutops form. Not much more to say than that. It's, it's kind of just that you know adapted into this kind of design which i think is fun and the same can be said for omen star which is the lord helix version of the missing no one detail i just noticed and i went back and looked at kabutops and it has the same detail is that within the eye you can see 
the little Hermite. You can see the Hermite, like the little, the little missing no spirit within its eye, which I think is a nice touch. Next, we have Spookoot, which I believe is an evolution to Hoot Hoot, not Noctowl. I believe it's like a split evolution situation where this one is Dark Flying. It definitely lives up to its name, that Dark Flying type. It kind of reminds me of Tokoyami from uh, My Hero Academia. Not sure if that was intentional, but those that kind of purple and yellow elements very much remind me of, of, of that guy's quirk. I think the design detail of bringing the foot all the way up um, to its like chest area rather than like hiding it kind of how like when you lift up a, a, an owl That's what exactly what it looks like. It adds to the creep factor while being like kind of biologically correct Next up we have Sultorian, which is a rock psychic type. I think it's really interesting It's like one of those kind of sigilyph kind of feeling designs where you can't you don't kind of know what to make of it or even like Behem, um, where you kind of don't know what to make of it um, But it's like it has its own little weird charm to it it reminds me of like the uh, the, the spirits from uh, Princess Mononoke, the the tree spirits, I believe they're called. After that, we have Centaurian, which is a rock psychic type, and I like the idea of a centaur Pokemon being not a literal horse, half horse, half person, but like being embodied through something else. I also believe this was before we got Palkia's uh, uh, origin form, um, Palkia and Dialga's origin form. So, so this is the original origin, Palkia, the original origin thing. What? There's also the little detail of like, kind of like the Triforce going on in its back legs, which is interesting. It's funny how this design kind of has a lot of the same elements as uh, uh, of Palkia origin form, as well as Dialga origin form before that game even released. Next up, we have Whimper, which is a ghost fairy type, and it is based on the Cheshire Cat, and I just love that so much. Look how cute this thing is. It's, it's adorable, but also like, it has that feeling of the Cheshire Cat where you're like, not quite sure where its intentions are, but it also just, just is fun to look at. I do wish the pose was a little bit more uh, slanted to the other, like turned so that you could see more of the kind of unraveling body that it has because it kind of just, you can kind of see a little window of it, but you can't see the full thing. Like, and I, I imagine with a 3D model, you would be able to, but as far as like just a fake bun art perspective, I kind of wish it was, you could see more of that unraveling body because I think it's a really fun design detail. Next up, we have Whiskers, which is just a natural evolution to Whimper. It, I, I love that it has that kind of ghastly Gengar feeling to it while being its own cat Pokemon as well. It just combines those elements in a fun way that makes it feel unique while also being reminiscent of other Pokemon. This is one I would definitely have on my team if I were traveling through Solympia. The ghost fairy typing is just awesome as well as the design itself is just so fun to look at. Next up, we have Adorsum, which is a water rock type and it's like an invertebrate of some kind. I don't, I don't remember what this was based on. Um, I do like its little, it's a widow teeth. It has widow two first. I think that's cute. Um, but that actually makes it really endearing. <laughs> like just having those two little teeth changes the entire design for me. Like you have these veins going on in the back, but when you look at that face, you just that that gosh darn face, you know. After that, we have a jawsome, which I think is a great name. It's funny. It's just like putting jaw in the middle of awesome, but like it also still works because it's like jawsome. Or, or, or Aw Jawsome. I, I guess Jawsome also could have worked because it's like, it's full of jaw. But at the same, but yeah, I guess that would just, no, yeah, you could still do that. Anyway, it kind of reminds me, um, spoilers, spoilers, AOT spoilers. Um, but it kind of reminds me of the, the kind of creature uh, the, that like kind of comes out of Eren um, in the, you know what I mean? I, that what that, Whatever that creature is that what is like essentially birthed the, the Titans. I don't know if that has like an actual name. It reminds me of that. Next up, we have Arachnid, which is a psychic grass type. And I just love this Pokemon because of its design inspiration, which are the Spriggans from Skyrim and the Elder Scrolls series, I believe. It's an elemental, but also plays into an Arachne, which is like, you know, a half person, half spider, which is a Greek myth kind of tying in that kind of overarching Greek theme within the Solympia region. Next up, we have Arachne, which is, I believe, Arachne plus Fae, but I am fairly certain there are other pronunciations of Arachne that sound like Arachne. Um, uh, so maybe I'm wrong on that one, but I'm not 100% on the name there. Um, but I mean, we have Pokemon like Seal, so like, and Dugong. So who can really complain here, I guess. I have the same things to say about it that I did Arachnid. I think it's just a really fun design. I like the glowy green elements of it. And it's, you know, based on Spriggans, which I like the Spriggans from Skyrim. Next up, we have Escar Cloak. I believe it's pronounced that way because like Escar Go. Um, but I 
think it could also be Eskar Clock because it's like lock, like Loch Ness Monster, I believe. That's kind of the idea behind it. It's very water type and it, it gives off a draconic feeling even though it is a fairy type. And I really like the addition of the shell being very highly reminiscent of Slowbro and Slowking's like shelter, helmet, and tail. It's a really fun and colorful Pokemon that evokes its typing very well. Next up, we have Solympian Lapras and Toby did my girl right. I love Lapras so much. It's one of my favorite Pokemon for it to get a grass water type and it kind of have this like bushy shell as well as these like kind of tendrils coming out of its mouth. I think is so fun. I did a Lapras form in Cornera and I really enjoyed that. And this kind of has that same kind of feeling to it as that. I believe in the storyline, even like Cornera and Lapras and Solympian Lapras kind of have the same thing where they try to avoid humans or, or they're rarer to see or something like that. I, I feel like I remember that being a part of the series where you saw uh, a Lapras and they were kind of rarer to see. Either way, it's a really cool design that makes some simple changes that make all the difference. Next up, we have Seijin, which is a grass rock type and it is the wizard Pokemon. I can definitely see the wizard feeling to it. I feel like it, it kind of feels a little bit redundant when we have uh, Solympian Alakazam um because that is already kind of a wizardy pokemon um the design is pretty cool I, I think it has another one of those things where it's like a little too much uh, uh grass elements going on the vines with the leaves and then the leaves on top of the leaves um and it kind of the, the vines kind of take away from the face because like the face is a cool face it has some really dis cool design details going on there but the vines kind of distract you from that in my opinion you can definitely tell what it's going for having that kind of sage you know old statue overgrown to flana flana Lana overgrown with fauna that ultimately tells you some hidden truth or hidden wisdom uh kind of thing like comes to life and tells you some kind of hidden truth kind of like great Deku tree but like as a rock statue next up we have Marion which is a dark grass type and I believe its evolutions kind of evoke puppet Ganon um from Wind Waker so many really cool Wind Waker references in this region and Wind Waker, as Wind Waker is one of my favorite uh Legend of Zelda games it like makes my heart happy I love when I love when Dex entries say like you've never seen one born in the wild because then it's like if you then go breed it then it's like I, I guess it would probably be in the unbreedable category um which I think would be a fun little lore addition there but if it isn't if it does have like an egg category I think it would be interesting to be like oh I bred the first one come look as far as design it's really simple you can kind of see what it's leading into it's going to lead into that kind of puppet cannon kind of feeling um I like the idea of a puppet Pokemon it almost kind of feels like a cinnamon roll like the kind of swirly hair and then like the brown bottom it kind of feels like a cinnamon roll not sure if that was intentional but it reminds me of like the angry little cinnamon roll does anybody remember that video like like in the late 2000s and here is hypnotrist exactly as promised this is kind of a puppet ganon kind of thing going on there i love the multiple arms feeling you know like an arachnid without being an arachnid it's got that it's got that vague animalistic feeling going on to it because it's supposed to be a marionette it's supposed to be you know it's a Pokemon in general they have kind of a lot of them kind of have that vagueness to what their inspiration is as far as the animal side of things I really like the idea that Hypmothic and Hypnotrist kind of have like hypnotism battles I like little lore expansions like that in the deck entries I wonder if Hypno would get in on that like do you think they would also want to try and get into this like hypnotism battle after that we have coink which is a steel fairy type and it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a piggy bank and I love that and it's also kind of like when pigs fly and it's so cute like honestly it could be a mascot Pokemon honestly also giving it levitate as an ability to acknowledge it's like flying I think is really cool and so kind of to subvert the flying type rather than you know having it be flying type it, it, it subverts that by having levitate next up we have hot golden which is an evolution to coink it is also still fairy type and I really like the kind of pot of gold that it's coming out out of I like the like the design element of it coming out of a, a pot of gold like that um and the kind of uh I'm pretty, pretty sure that's a pokey dollar tail as well if I were to change this design I would kind of re remove the hair and then like kind of the handle on the side of the kind of pot of gold because you can kind of get the pot of gold without the handle and it just adds an extra element that I feel isn't necessary to this design I also just noticed it has like coins on its like hands which I think is also cool I would also make it so that the wings match up um like they kind of mirrors of each other rather than the kind of perspective thing that's going on here where um the right side is way bigger than the left side um it is like the perspective is fine but I think the perspective of the right wing is just a little too exaggerated um to the point where it feels like I mean that's like literally the, the the right wing is the size of the entire design so I I would have I would have tailored the wings to be a bit smaller um and like had them be more like the left side overall it's a solid design and I really like the name hot golden after that we have Tyclone which is an electric flying type um and this is kind of a rival to another Pokemon that's a cloud-based Pokemon called Zelosis and the my one kind of gripe with this design 
Uh, it's not even the design itself. The design is solid. It's that we have also, and later you'll see, we have another kind of Cyclone-based Pokemon that's actually like the main, like one of the main legendary Pokemon of the uh, of Pokemon Tempest. It's like the, it is the Tempest Pokemon. With there being a Tempest, it ultimately makes sense that there's multiple wind-based, you know, Pokemon in this region that would probably adapt to the wind. I think having two Cyclone-based Pokemon in the same region um, with kind of similar design traits, it feels kind of redundant to me, especially when one has like a huge role in the story. Aside from that, as a Cyclone Pokemon, regardless of if there's another one, I think it's a solid design. I like the idea of this being like a parasite that infects Zolosis, um and like sw swirls them around and turns into, turns into this like electric flying type thing. I think it's a really cool concept and really solid concept. I just feel like it's taken away a little bit by having the main legendary be kind of a similar concept. I'm not sure if Toby connected them lore-wise, if maybe there is some kind of connection be between Tyclone and that legendary. Um, but yeah, I, I don't remember there being like a huge focus put on Tyclone in that legendary. Unless like, I, or even like using Tyclone as like maybe ads in, in, in a boss fight, like something, some things you have to defeat before defeating the main legendary. I can't even remember if that was a part of it. Maybe it was and I'm just forgetting. And then we have Zolossus, which we had talked about uh, Tyclone inhabiting. Um, Zolossus, you know, this big cloud Pokemon, I think is so cool. I've used clouds as like an inspiration for flying types in my designs frequently enough that I'm like, I need to probably take a break on that. Um, I just think it's fun. I think it's so fun. And I know that I've done it a few times now, but I just enjoy doing it. I just really like how this is a grumpy old cloud Pokemon. It just has this, this grumpy old man appearance to it, which is a fun take on the a cloud Pokemon. Next up, we have Sleedle, which is an ice bug type. And I really like this design. This is its form without a snowball. Um, and I believe JJ Mons did this design. Uh, I think to I remember Toby saying that JJ Mons did this and I love JJ Mons. We work with JJ Mons regularly on this channel. Um, so it's always cool to see a design of theirs, pun intended. <laughs> I, I was actually the pun wasn't intended, but now it is intended. I really like the idea of a dung beetle rolling up snow rather than, you know, dung and it having these kind of like furry elements on its on its cuffs kind of having like, like a like a long sleeve almost parka kind of thing going on it almost looks like a jacket with its shell it looks like kind of like one of those poofy jackets with its shell i love when pokemon incorporate clothes into the design i mean we've seen this a couple times throughout this region and i like it pretty much every time here is sleetle in its snowball form and it's just amazing it's just like it's so huge look how huge that snowball is and it's it's fantastic and uh it reminds me of like that Mario Party mini game when you're trying to roll up snowballs and shoot them at each other. But also it reminds me of GMAX Cinderace in that same way. Also the way it's posed, it's just like, attack, charge, brethren. You know, I it makes me endeared to it even more. After that, we have Harapin, which is a flying poison type. And I love the flying poison type combination. We've only seen it with the Zubat line and we need, we need more. We need more. I say this all the time. We need more. And using a harpy to display that type combination is even cooler. The pose to me feels a little awkward. I don't know how to put my finger on it. It just doesn't feel like it's displaying Harapin's traits in the most effective way. Um, that being said, like it says in its dex entry that it's the baby of the sky and babies famous for not knowing how to operate their body properly. So maybe Harapin just didn't get the pose right when the person was sketching up this, their, their art, you know, <laughs> like that from a lore perspective. I don't know. Uh, it just kind of feels a little quirky to me. And Harapin evolves into Fury Pin. And I think this design is, it does exactly what I was kind of trying to say. It like, it, it displays this, the cool elements of this design. It, it's a simple pose. It's a simple pose and it's kind of straightforward, but it also displays a lot of the really cool, um, aspects of this design. This being the Sky Knight Pokemon, it like comes from being this like kind of quirky kid to being this like knightly presence in the sky while still being a poison type, which is cool. Not like not being like a steel type traditional like knightly feeling thing, I think is really cool. I'm also just kind of a fan when character designs like hide their face a little bit. Like, you know, that's kind of maybe that's just the edge lord in me. Kind of like Inumaki or even uh, Grisha. Is it Grisha? Grusha? Grusha. It's Grusha. Grisha is, is uh, a really bad dad. Fury Pin evolves into Seraphim, which is a great progression of the name coming from like Seraphim. Um, and it being a flying fairy type, it's kind of like redeemed itself from the poison typing. Um, once again, one of those things where it's like, I'm not, ex it serves the greater design story. I don't think it serves the Pokemon itself being two stages of poison and then suddenly fairy. Um, I guess you could just Eviolite Fury Pin and have like a solid poison type Pokemon. The design though, the design though. 
infusing elements of, a, you know, a biblically accurate angel. Someone said that, like, biblically accurate angel isn't the correct term. Maybe seraphim is. I'm not sure what the exact terminology for that kind of angel is. But, like, infusing that into this design, it kind of feels like Garudamon to me from, from Digimon. It feels like Garudamon mixed with its evolution ho oh -Mon, which, you know, yeah, I know, I know there's Ho-Oh, the Pokemon, but there's Ho-Oh-Mon, the Digimon, which has these four wings. Um, and I just think that's so cool. It's just such a cool design. The eye being on the chest rather than in its face, it just gets like haunting, but at the same time, it's epic. And it's a, a Pokemon I definitely would love to have on my team. It almost feels like an Ultra Beast to me. Like this could be like UB Seraph or something like that, or UB Angel, just because of how different it feels from the, a, a typical like Pokemon design. Like UBs kind of broke what a Pokemon design could be and they added like all these extra features and stuff like that like this being a, a, a vortex of wings kind of feels like kind of Guzzlord in a way how like Guzzlord is kind of like a got all these like different hands and things coming out of it it has that same vibe that same effect to me after that we have Rifoon, which I love that this is pure flying type for one and for two it's like a fusion between Braviary and Arcanine and I love that like of course in the Pokemon world where there's we have like Arcanine which is almost this lion like dog um, infusing in an eagle, which is Braviary, into that design. I, I know, like, I'm pretty sure a griffin is supposed to be part lion, but, like, whatever. It's, you know, the, the Arcanine kind of feels like a, a tiger, so it's it's close enough, and it's epic, so don't question it. With the coloration, it feels like it could be Ice-type, but, like, really doesn't need it. Like, not every white Pokemon needs to be part Ice-type. Next up, we have Solympian Onyx, which is the Ice-type, referencing the Crystal Onyx episode of the anime, which has been, like, a hallmark of, of, of Bird Keeper Toby's channel. And this dude is just so monstrous feeling. I love that. It just looks angry. It's, it's, it's coiling around, about to attack you. This pose is fantastic. Simple changes that are super effective, and I, I just love it. After that, we have Solympian Steelix, which has these kind of crystals growing out of it, and, you know, also invoking the Crystal Onyx, um, but also a little bit of Mega Steelix. Ice types are typically pretty frail, so having this bulky ice type with, with ice harder than steel is really neat, and I think it, it's, it's, it's well needed, honestly. After that, we have Cerebat, which is a psychic flying type, and yeah, you can definitely see it's a psychic flying type. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even think I needed to say the type there. This thing is so freaky looking to me. It just looks like the head of a fully evolved Pokemon with wings of a, le a lesser evolved Pokemon. The brain pattern on it kind of feels a little bit like an afterthought. Like, maybe it could have been a bit more intentional. It kind of just feels like, you know, like Squiggles kind of loosely put around that area to try to make it feel like a brain. But I feel like it could have been more intentional with that design trait i really like this pokemon's concept i think it, like the kind of idea of being a mind vampire uh like you know or or even like a kind of an energy vampire in a way um is is fun and um it almost has that of that idea of like a flying head like i know i said earlier that um it looks like the head of an adult pokemon put on with like the wings and you know of the of a base stage um and i think that plays into it pretty well with it kind of almost feeling like a floating head kind of kind of like shrilp was um where it's just like this flying head flying at you of course you would be freaking terrified and then it evolves into Vampirain, and honestly this feels like mandark to me from dexter's laboratory it feels very much like if like mandark was a pokemon it has this big old brain and these kind of goofier glasses and it's like all wrapped up in itself um you know giving that kind of dracula count dracula vibe to it i love its category of the mind munching pokemon just munching munching on a brain it being wrapped up like that makes it still kind of feel like a floating head um i, I feel like it the the while the reference is really cool of like the kind of dracula draped in a cloak thing um or even like it hanging upside down um pretty much probably how you would naturally see it according to its dex entry it, it limits the design and makes it kind of like uh, it kind of partitions the design where it's like brain face body where the body doesn't feel like it has super unique aspects to it like if you had maybe like had one of the part of the cloak do this and then the other part come out like this like bleh, you know um you could have seen parts of the body and maybe given some of the interior some extra design traits after that we have wall rice which is an ice water type and this is like yet another one um where it was kind of like almost a form of convergent evolution where it's like it, it's a combination of snorlax and and walrein which you know a bear and a walrus don't really share a lot in common except for like the kind of more blubbery aspect of their like, their designs i know it's not blubber on snorlax it's like stored fat and stuff like that like bears do went for to hibernate for the winter but still it kind of that, that shared basic idea even in the dex entry it talks about convergent evolution so like yet another pokemon that was a convergent pokemon before they were convergent pokemon though it doesn't have the kind of same like vibe of uh, of reflecting either of the pokemon completely 
it, it, it lands more in the middle, which I honestly think is is a, a more fun way and like is a form of getting or us getting more like Pokemon fusions or Pokemon hybrids. I think that would be a fun way to tackle that within the Pokemon sphere. After that, we have Claudle, and by God, this is not the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Look how cute he is! Like, this is another one that needs a plush. I'm just saying, this is another one that needs a plush. It just does. It just does. It's like a little teddy bear. I want to hold him, and I want to sketch him, and I know that's the point of his concept, and you're not supposed to do that, but I want to do it anyway. It kind of plays into a sloth bear a little bit. You can kind of see those savage claws, like, yeah, you know, bears look really cute, and you want to cuddle them because they look like cute little big old dogs or whatever, but, like, you shouldn't do that. And that culminates in embarrass, which is, like, it also sounds like embarrass. It's, it's supposed to be, like, embrace, but it also sounds like embarrass. Like, you're going to be embarrassed if you try and hug this Pokemon and, like, it murks you. It's a ground dark type playing into that. It's the bear trap Pokemon. It makes itself look happy and look fun to hug before trapping you in an embrace of death. Next up, we have Solympian Agron. And my honest take is that I think this should be, like, an completely new evolution to Laron, like a split evolution or regional split evolution or something like that. It's just that different from Agron. Um, that being said, it's a really freaking cool Pokemon. It's an insanely cool Pokemon. Um, like this croc, like giving these crocodilian aspects to the Agron uh, design is is so sick. And like the point where you meet it in the story is also a really fun point to me. I really enjoy that kind of like a little bit more of a side quest that we did uh, to get to the like water type gym. I also enjoyed the gym leader. I can't quite remember their name, but I enjoyed the gym leader. Um, they had a really fun personality. This Pokemon really encapsulates the epicness that Pokemon can have in the, like all the best ways. Um, it doesn't feel insanely over-designed. Like there are a few elements maybe I would like simplify a little bit, but I, 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 I don't know. I don't think, I don't, can't, I can't tell even where I would start. Um, I think it's just so epic that it really doesn't need to. After that, we have Solympian Aegislash, which is Steel Fairy type. Love this design. Love the idea behind it. Love it. It's like, it's kind of like Excalibur feeling Lady of the Lake sword kind of vibe going on to it, uh, which is probably why it gets that fairy type. Giving Aegislash these softer, almost pastel colors works so well, what, like along with the like thinning of its blade. So it's not this like bulky blade, but just like this thin, elegant blade. Honestly, I'd love to see the entire line done in this style, though I know like, you know, it's it's expensive to commission artwork. So, you, you know, got to save where you can. After that, we have Exwomari, a steel water type. And this dude is awesome. He's just, it kind of feels like it's just a robotic little creature. Just a robotic little guy. It, it, I love the idea of the, the like, kind of cranium of a squid or, or an octopus um, uh, being a grenade. <laughs> that's just, that's so cool. And so just, and it's simple too. It like makes the design simple. You can see what it is. It's like, oh, grenade head, like robotic body feels feels is, is it cephalopod is that what it is a cephalopod it is a cephalopod i need to stop doubting myself i'm correct most of the time and you know if you if i'm not you guys will correct me anyway next up we have squaboom which is the evolution to Ex explomari honestly i feel like squaboom fits fits explomari better and like this name explomari fits this name better because this one is like super explosive where the other one feels like it's like a, a boom you know like this is a this is a boom but this one's an explosion regardless of that i think this is a mixture of the uh giant blooper from super mario sunshine and those squids that you see in uh legend of zelda wind waker there was a lot of giant squids going on in the gamecube era I'm not sure if Toby clarified that this is an experimental Pokemon, like some kind of Pokemon that was born from human technology, but it definitely feels like it. It feels like something like maybe the Aether Foundation would have experimented with uh, to, I don't know, try and hunt the Ultra Beasts. Maybe the Aether Foundation is trying to expand into the Solympia region um, and like take out Dra the Draken because it says like the Draken is trying to kill the Draken, I believe. Yeah, it says the Draken are their rival. So maybe like Aether Foundation was trying to push through into the, 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 the Solympia region. Um, to try and expand their domain maybe before the events of Sun and Moon. Who knows? After this, we have Calm Ice. Um, this is yet another one. I kind of talked about how the type, or like where the type changes each level. Um, I think th this one does it well because of the design story. And each of them feel like unique enough that that justifies their like, like type situation. And I honestly feel like maybe it should have been saved for this Pokemon specifically because it feels like it's very intentional in its design that it should be three different types along the way um, because of the nature of a comet. It's kind of like some of the comments I got on a legendary bird of every type where they were saying like, you know, making an Eevee clone uh, like this makes Eevee less special. It kind of has that same kind of effect like when you have a pokemon that's early on that changes types each level and then you have a one that's later on that does it it kind of takes away from the one that does it later on not to say that this isn't a freaking awesome design i really like it like the ice rock type also a fun type a lot of people dunk on it because it's quad weak to fighting and 
uh, and, and whatever. Uh, but I think it's a fun type. I think fun, fun, like type combinations, regardless of their weaknesses and stuff like that, are just fun to see sometimes. Next up, we have Median, which is a Fire Rock type, changing that type from Ice to Fire, um, which makes sense, kind of melting off as a, you know a, a meteor enters orbit uh, or, or, or a comet enters orbit. It like starts to melt off and like become you know engulfed in flames, which makes sense for this design for sure. And this design is smaller than Calm Ice, which I think is a fun design trait that, like, as it evolves, it gets smaller and smaller because that's what happens when, you know, a, a, a comet or a, or a meteor enters our atmosphere. It breaks away and gets smaller and smaller. And finally, we have Fragmite, which is an electric rock type, and I really love this design. It almost reminds me of like, some kind of Power Rangers character of some kind. I don't know why. It's just the design feels so solid in that regard, and, like, the rock has turned into this, like, diamond. Like this, uh, the, the you know the meteorite diamond, some kind of like uh, harnessable element. Um, it's the new star Pokemon, so like it, it's become um, like gone from fire to becoming plasma in a way. The design story of this is like big things come in small packages kind of thing. Like it may be the smallest of this evolution line, but it's the strongest. It's also the coolest looking. He just like looks like a total dude. Like one of those like 2000s kind of character designs where like like Jet Set Radio where you have that design guy who just like looks super cool because he's wearing these like goggles or whatever. That's probably why I equated it to Power Rangers is because it has that like singular goggle design with like the mouthpiece. After that, we have KO KO, which is an ice rock type. Um, and this was, I believe, from a very early video on in on, on Toby's channel um, talking about, I believe it was like common ancestors and stuff like that. Because, you know, this Pokemon is named the Ancestor Pokemon, and it's believed to be the ancestor of Fox Pokemon everywhere, as it says in its next entry. And I can definitely see it. You can see kind of like Rock Ruff coming in through here, a little bit of Growl. Like Growlithe isn't even a, a, a Fox Pokemon, but you can see that in there. Um, you can see some elements of, of, of Alolan Vulpix because of that Ice Rock typing. Also, I know that Rock Ruff isn't a Fox Pokemon. You don't have to come for me. I know it's more of a Wolf Pokemon but it still has that kind of feeling to it where like the, the the poofiness of its of its fur feels very much like rock rough and as well as these like kind of head spikes going on feels like lichen rock after that we have kaoki kaoki um which is great i love this i just it's such a cool design it's very sleek it's giving out what's that is that like really long-legged like wolf or fox something or other there's like a, a specific breed um or maybe it's like a, a thing of myth i can't remember there's like the long-legged wolves or something like that um, and it very much feels like that, but not in a creepy way, but in a very epic and elegant way. After that, we have Diavern, which is an ice dragon type. And this thing is so neat. It feels like I, you can see it in its like claws, but it feels very Necrozma. Maybe some kind of uh, situation where it's like comes from the same planet or, 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 or dim dimension as Necrozma. Um, I'm not sure if that was like a part of the idea, but um, it definitely feels like maybe this thing could have come through an ultra wormhole at some point the wings are really like i really like the mist wings i would you have this kind of diamond pattern going on throughout all of the design and then suddenly when the wings it changes the design i would have just like kept those diamonds like lining it rather than this kind of spiky ice just to kind of continue that same kind of design story you have going on there this to me feels like it could definitely fit in as like a Yu-Gi-Oh monster um and i wouldn't think twice about it i think it's really epic and it's like it's like blue eyes ice dragon or something like that i don't know after that we have electric which is an electric dragon type and i love that name it's very very punny um you can see these three eyes coming out of uh, out of it and it has these little tendrils coming out of its the, the egg itself it reminds me of digitamamon um did i know i know if i've compared a lot to digimon and i don't mean that as a bad thing at all i love digimon i love digimon so much um, and I think Digimon are awesome. And I think people calling Pokemon, oh, it looks like a Digimon is as an insult is is dumb. Like, I think that's a, that's a bad insult because Digimon designs are all, like most of them are pretty epic. Anyway, making an egg Pokemon that feels different from Togepi and Execute is, a, is an awesome feat uh, by Toby here. And it almost evokes kind of like a same, like that Mimikyu feeling or, or you know, that thing of something hiding underneath the surface um, that's about to come out. Mimikyu doesn't ever come out, but you know, it, you can tell this this is about to evolve and boy what an evolution we have thundra which is of course a reference to king Ghidorah from the godzilla franchise a dragon pokemon made up of pure electric energy like i said earlier i love like when pokemon embody the element that they are and this is no exception 
Like, I think this is super epic. Um, it, it's simple. It kind of feels like you can see some like traces of Reggie Alecki um, in that like kind of tail area there. It kind of feels like Reggie Alecki's uh, arms. All the while, this is a reference to the Hydra bringing in that Greek inspiration as well. After that, we have Lagaladon, which is a fairy ground type. There's another form as well. Um, this one is the Dragon Slayer Pokemon. I believe uh, uh, Toby said this was made by Phoebe, uh, Cup of Fee. If you have not checked out their channel, they are a friend of the channel and a friend of mine that you should definitely check out. They're making some really quality content over on their channel. I believe the story was that this was a Pokemon Phoebe was working on and uh, Toby thought it would work for this region. And so, the, you know, Toby implemented it into this region. I'm not exactly sure the inspiration. It kind of is giving me like uh, a Volpertinger um, or Wolpertinger. I, I'm, I'm pretty, I was trying to pronounce it German. I don't know if that worked. Um, but the Wolpertinger is like a, a, a part, uh, like kind of like a um, a jackalope, but it has like wings. That's what this kind of gives me. But I like that the horns kind of feel like an extension of the fur. I think that's really cool. And it kind of feels draconic in and of itself with these kind of this kind of curly long like mustache or like antennae. Here is its other form, and this one feels a little bit more sweet and innocent. Like the other one feels like like it's bigger. And this one feels like maybe it's like it's smaller, almost like uh kind of like not as drastic but like the hoopa to hoopa unbound kind of feeling to it like this one feels like much more elegant i mean i think the ice ground type like the bringing in that ice ice kind of has a certain feels like a certain elegance to it like the softness and the quietness of snow i feel like that gets brought into ice type designs pretty well i like you know big example is alone in nine tails this one definitely feels more rabbit like the last one felt like a mixture of like a rat and a rabbit but this one definitely feels like an arctic hair of sorts and i definitely think this is based on a wool pretender i mean look at these little wings coming out of its like backside like you can kind of see um that in the previous design as well um it also like the the main kind of has it reminds me of my little pony and i mean that in a, a super positive way my daughter loves my little pony and i enjoy watching it with her after that we have oceatus i think this is the uh, another, yet another like kind of legendary pokemon um this is an elemental and it's based i believe you can see that in the mask it's based on uh like kind of like the twilight masks from from uh pokemon pokemon from Zelda, Twilight Princess, Pokemon Twilight Princess. Hmm, there's a thought. Anyway, this is the Elemental of Water, much the same as kind of like the Regis are. This is like uh, Solympia's equivalent to that, um, uh, but in its own like unique way where it feels a little bit more um, like literal. Like it's just water with the mask. Like the, the mask, you know, is, is I don't, is the mask the, the, the body or is the water the body? I assume the mask is the body and the water forms around the mask. I believe there's some kind of lore that this Pokemon was split off from uh, a legendary Pokemon. Um, I, th I think I think Thundra actually has something to do with it. I might be mistaken. I believe that there was some kind of lore that like there was a Pokemon that was like of almighty power and then like its body split in into pieces um, and like Thundra was the body and then these were like or something something to that effect moving on to the next elemental we have Helifos, which is the fire elemental it's the sun child pokemon you know helios the sun kind of got it, getting that inspiration in there i will say i don't know if i'm as much of a fan of the kind of literal galarian moltres slash moltres elements infused into there i feel uh maybe they could have been incorporated a little bit differently to make it feel uh like i think the wings i think it's mostly the wings like if you had made the wings let's have that black part to them and just made them more I, I think you could have even you know you have this uh the the regular moltres fire at the, the bottom i feel like it could be incorporated have been incorporated into the top to to be the bridge like the kind of like the arm of the wing uh rather than this like uh black part because it feels like the uh um the actual moltres elements is kind of almost an afterthought like a like a thing you did in coloration not like it was as uh, as intentional i guess that being said, there is something to the rule of cool. You know, uh, uh, Toby is a D&D &D player, and they're, I, I don't know, if, I'm pretty sure they're a dungeon master as well, and you gotta follow the rule of cool sometimes. And in this case, like, is it cool to have, like, kind of a weird hybrid between Moltres and Galarian Moltres? Sure, yeah, it is. And so, why not do it, you know? But not everything needs to be completely dissected to death, but this is just me. That's part of the region review. So, um, yeah. <laughs> After this, we have Guyana, uh is it Guyanus or Guyanus? Is it supposed to be Guyanus? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, this is the grass elemental, and here is yet another gripe of mine. Uh, this makes three tornado Pokemon in the region total, um, and this is the embodiment of the grass elements. Um, and so it does have that in the top half, but this uh, kind of whirlwind um, element is like, okay, well, shouldn't it be an embodiment of air as well? Like, 
why is it this uh, embodiment of grass, but there's like, it feels like there's this air element to it too that's not presented in its type. There's something to be said about the wind carrying like aspects, like you can see there's like berries and stuff in its in its uh, tornado that probably are, gets carried and planted in other places. Um, I, but as far as like a, an embodiment of an element, I feel like um, making such a huge focus air rather than the grass element that it is, I feel like it takes away a little bit. On its own, the design is really cool. I think it's a cool design. I mean, I um, I think in one of these Cyclone designs, um, I believe it was the legendary that um, Toby said that, that that was one of the first Pokemon they had ever drawn or, or something like that, or something that like one of the Pokemon they drew when they were little. And I was obsessed with like the tornado things when I was uh, little, like, a lot of my drawings are filled with these like mo monsters that have like a, a tornado body, but like then like this, you know, kind of this, this, this kind of thing. Almost, I, I probably drew something akin to Guyanus in, in some of my books as well when I was younger. Um, and this, this, uh, the Slimpia region is kind of an embodiment of that for Toby. So I know I've clarified this a bunch, but anything I'm saying here is not meant out of rudeness or anything like that. After that, we have the pseudo legendary of the Slimpia region, or my, should I say the kind of like hidden pseudo legendary of the region because um, this is meant to reflect Capon. That's why it's called Mimichick. It's a pure flying type. It's the Mimic Pokemon. It's meant to mimic Mimichick. So people think it's a Mimichick or um, think it's a Capon. Um, it's kind of that idea that birds, they will like lay their eggs or some like, there's some birds that like look similar to a certain bird. Um, and so they will like lay their eggs in that bird's nest. And like when the bird is a baby, that, that bird will get tricked into feeding um, the wrong babies that aren't their babies, and then eventually they'll like push them out. It's like awful. It's, it's, it's one of the most awful feeling things in nature. But that's the basic idea of this Pokemon. It's trying to look like Capon so he can steal the food from their parents and stuff like that. Mimichick evolves into Foul Raptor, which is a flying poison type. Um, and it is, uh, you know, it looks exactly like a Scraptor. Uh, it's still carrying on that that the idea, like the male Scraptor at least, um, but but being different enough that it, you can definitely recognize this is its own Pokemon. But this is kind of a middle stage to kind of show you that the veil is slowly lifting. Like this is not, you know, a Mimichick. This is not a Mimic anymore. This is its own thing. Um, it still kind of looks like this Pokemon, but like there is a final stage that completely breaks from those those tropes. And that is Avalisk, which is a Poison Dragon type, and this thing is so freaking cool. It has that intimidation factor that a pseudo legendary should have and feels completely unique to anything a, a pseudo legendary has done before. This is once again one of those Pokemon that changes type each time it evolves, which I feel like maybe we should have had Mimichick just be a flying poison type from the start so that way we could kind of solve that problem. Um, uh, just so, you know, because it is an, you know, it doesn't need to be pure flying type. If it, it's one way to differentiate that, you know, Mimichick and Capon is adding that poison type to the end of it. Regardless of that, this is a Pokemon I definitely would want to have on my team. I know, like, a lot of people would definitely want the pseudo legendary on their team because it's strong, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, um, use Dragapult or Vaxcalibur in my playthroughs of Sword and Shield and, and, uh, uh, Scarlet and Violet. I feel like a lot of the time the pseudo legendary is a very late game addition and then you have to grind it up a bunch. So it's like, you kind of, really have to work for a pseudo legendary and for this one i would definitely want to put in the work after that we have Tidafoon, which is the pokemon that i've been talking about this legendary pokemon it's a flying dark type and it is the pokemon that brings around the tempest which pokemon tempest is kind of named after i really like Tidafoon. i think this design is so solid it, it once again has like elements of gengar that i appreciate but it has this like really long tail that goes throughout the design which i think works really well with the cyclone that it has going on around it this tornado it has going around it you can feel that its tail almost controls this tornado like it, this wherever its tail goes the tornado goes as well um and like it feels like the tornado is like an organic part of its body uh just so much as the tail is and this is Tidafoon's kind of like more like unleashed form which again you can see the tail kind of going up into that storm that it has um and uh, it's so it's like this this is giving definitely uh gmax gengar I pro this is probably a little bit of a design inspiration there uh it definitely gives that same kind of vibe that terrifying gaping maw that it has um, is, is definitely scary. You would definitely not want to be on the uh, front end of that. Also, the eyes, kind of like Scarecrews, are giving this kind of venom feeling to it, which I quite enjoy. After that, we have Alura, which is a flying rock type, and it has this kind of like more Grecian statue atop this, you know, ball of air akin to the ones that uh, Aang would make in Avatar The Last Airbender. 
It kind of has that like Celebi, Mew, Hoopa, Jirachi kind of feeling to it. I really love Pixie Mythical, so of course I really like this as well. I can see it fluttering about like Aang does on the like, you know, the air ball that he makes. I can't, there's a name to it and I can't put my, I can't remember what the name is. After that, we have the Primordials, which I think are an interesting take, kind of like an own, their own like little unique legendary subgroup. Kind of like the Ultra Beasts in a way. I think the kind of glowing design trip that they have going on to them throughout these different designs is really fun. Starting with Beta, we have a, the, the Dark Grass type. They're all part dark, I believe. This one, of course, being based on the Trojan Horse, which was thought to be a gift, was but was ultimately, you know, the demise of the Trojan people. The idea of this like, kind of archaic thing that was that was supposed to be a gift but turned into a weapon made into like a, its own devastating creature is super unique and super cool. After that, we have Kappa, which I it's just brilliant just brilliant like of course like there's kappa which is the greek you know they're all based off of greek letters but there's kappa but there's also a kappa which is the japanese mythological creature you know and i think that's so fun that's so, it's such a fun little coincidence this one is of course dark water type i think they all kind of represent a different kind of element as it were we're not an element but like a you know a different type i think the kind of blue glowing elements against the grays and the greens is really really nice touch it, it really uh pops against those two colors and the kind of like water pool that's on the top of the kappa's head it it, it looks like it's glowing as well but it, it looks like it could be like almost like a cannon it fires water blasts out of not sure if that was intentional, but that's, it looks cool. Following Kappa, we have Sigma, which is kind of this like mermaid, almost like siren Pokemon. Um, and his dark ice type, which I think is such a fun, unique take on like the kind of these aquatic uh, creatures that are the mermaids and sirens. Also the tridents, you know, associated with Poseidon, who is also associated with merfolk, um, being, you know, integrated into the tail, I think is really cool. I think it being gold um, is, is, I think maybe it could have been more in line with the hair color of Sigma, because the gold kind of just feels out of place in this design. Like we have these like greens and whites and blues, but suddenly there's this gold element. Not to say Pokemon can't have touches of unique coloration. I just think it's like, it just kind of feels out of place. But I really enjoy like the this darker take on a mermaid or, or, or a siren, as it were. I really like this darker take for a for this kind of Pokemon. I think um, there's a lot of folklore of, of the, the darker sides of these creatures that is missed out on by Pokemon. Um, that I think, that, or in, in creatures in general that they do, that I think um, some are very well executed, but some I feel like we go for the like the happy part. I feel like there we can get some of the, those darker aspects in there as well. After that we have Epsilon, which I believe is kind of like almost like a partner to Upsilon, which we'll see next. This one is a dark fire type though. Um, I, will, I won't lie, I don't see the fire as much in this design i don't i don't i don't feel fire i feel more fighting from this design um like the red aspects almost feel like the kind of fighting red like the the red of of the fighting type is kind of more like a orangish dark orangish red and this kind of gives me that same feeling the design is very intimidating and i do like it i think it's a really cool design it kind of feels like wear sonic from uh, sonic unleashed it gives that that kind of feeling a little bit while i know while i know for certain this wasn't intentional the kind of claws are kind of like doing those are like, hey, who are touching my spaghetti? <laughs> That's just a stupid observation, but it's just, it's just, it made me laugh. After that, we have Upsilon, the partner to Epsilon, and it's a dark ghost type. It kind of has that kind of uh, uh, lichen almost feeling to it, that, that werewolfy spirit to it. But I think this one is supposed to be more cat like. Um, and, you know, where cats exist, where tigers, where, you know, where any kind of cat creature also exists. I do quite enjoy the posing of this one. It has that feeling of a cat that's like really like angry, like the, the fur gets raised and it's like, get away from me, you know? Uh, it's, it's like, it, it looks like Upsilon could be hissing at all times. The vibe I get from this thing's attack style is very much like the like those cat characters in video games, like in fighting games specifically, the ones that kind of like jump really high and lunge at you. Um, like Cat Mario is a good example as well, uh, but even those ones that are uh, in like fighting games that like kind of wrap their arms all the way around and like slice at you and they kind of like that X like slice attack. Um, I think, uh, uh, is it Felicia um, from Darkstalkers, I believe? I think that's her name. I think that's the game names as well. Yeah, that kind of thing. Then we have Gamma, which is a dark psychic type. I will say the psychic type on this thing is like, it still looks the same as ghost, uh, the ghost coloration. Um, but uh, I, this is sick. Uh, this is this, like I talked about all the different kind of mind flare Pokemon before. This one most definitely is evoking that for me. Um, I really, really like it. <laughs> like I, th I think it, it has like this like bar on the side of its head. It almost looks like, like charging up a brain level, like the, like the level of its intelligence or something like that. I don't know how to explain it. You, you know what I mean? Like when a battery is full, it kind of gives that same vibe. It is very Lovecraftian, 
very, very Lovecraftian. Uh, got that Cthulhu thing going on there. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. Of course, like the dark psychic type, this, this kind of creature, like a Mind Flayer or Cthulhu, kind of messes with your brain. Um, very much fits this type combination and this legendary series. Then we have Delta, which kind of, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Dark Dragon type. I think the Poison Dragon type is an error on this little sheet here. Um, it's, a, it's I think, pretty sure it's supposed to be Dark Dragon type, not Poison, or Dark Poison type. Not certain. Um, but uh, it's kind of got this, like, uh, what's, what is the name of that Japanese myth? It's escaping me. Is it Orochi? I believe it's Orochi. I, my, I pulled from my One Piece knowledge there. Um, I believe it's Orochi, um, the, 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 uh, um, the multi-headed kind of serpent. Um, as well as like it's got this gaping maw very much like uh like kind of like a, a guzzlord with that that mouth in the stomach super intimidating i like how the the main head the like kind of like fifth or like middle head is different from the rest of the heads kind of giving it its own distinct features i think that's really cool also the coloration of this it's very you know like i like the i like when when it comes to poison types i'm pretty sure this is i'm not sure if this is supposed to be poison or dark poison or dark dragon um but like if it is poison it definitely feels like i like green when applied to poison type um we get a lot of purples when it comes to poison types and sometimes blues but i really like green and this like kind of darker green really is appealing to my eye finally from the primordial series we have alpha omega and this is a com combination it's like a fusion of of uh um kyogre and groudon that comes together to look like this godzilla like uh, uh shin godzilla kind of feeling to it also, it being the pure dark type, kind of being the culmination of all the rest of the primordials, it embodies, like, it's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. It is all encompassing. It is this darkness that that, that is all encompassing. I really like kaiju Pokemon. That's why I really liked G-Max. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, this one, my heart goes out to this one. I also love Godzilla. Godzilla, I like, I, I just, I really like Godzilla. After that, we have Scarodactyl. I don't think this is kind of a part of the Hermite line. I think this is its own thing, um, but this is definitely a part of that kind of Missing No series. It's number 151 to kind of reference the Missing No in that way. That's why its dex number is that number. Um, the, yeah, the Missing Number Pokemon as it is. This kind of this kind of digital effect it has is also really like eerie. Like seeing this digital Pokemon kind of come to life and have still have this digital effect swirling around it, I feel like it would be really creepy and really, you know, helps with it being, you know, a ghost rock type and Scarodactyl. And the name, as with like Omen Star and Kabutops, I think is perfection. And here is the final Pokemon of Pokemon Tempest. There is also the Legends game that I'll be doing after this, like, you know, after this Pokemon. But this is the kind of final one in the decks, as it were. And it is Cyclops, a psychic rock type. I love the name. I love the idea. The concept is really solid. This kind of Titan made of stone that is also super cerebral is really cool. The eye, very creepy. I don't know if I like the eye. It kind of feels a little bit out of place with it having that glow around it. It kind of feels like someone like stuck it on there, if you know what I mean. Um, I feel like if, if we were going to have the natural third eye, it would, you would either need it to be big on the center of the brain, or you would need it to be, like, right in the middle, like this kind of third eye, like, situation. As far as the rest of the design, I think it's super solid. I like, I, I have an affinity for, like, big, hulking Pokemon. I don't know what that says about me, but I just, I do really do enjoy that. This kind of crack in its hand, I'm not sure if that's, like, a design choice, or if that's, like, a, there's, like, a story behind that. I would kind of like to know the story behind that, if there's some kind of, like, Oh, he was once, you know, attacked by some kind of uh, a dark creature and like this left this scar or maybe the, this was he was on a rampage and this hero defeated him by cutting open his hand or something like that. Now we move on to the Legends Pokemon, the Legends Tempest Pokemon that uh, Toby recently did a video on. This one is Zelevate in evolution to Zevolve, which it wasn't supposed, I'm pretty certain that it wasn't supposed to evolve in the first place. Like I think it was Salivite that wasn't supposed to evolve in the first place, then it became Zevolve and now it's Ze uh, Zelevate. Um, it's elevating. It also kind of infuses the name of, of Salivite in there as well. Um, but it's like, it's the alien queen from Alien. It makes Evolve into a middle stage, which feels right to me, honestly. After seeing this final stage, it feels like a, you can see the progression of this line from this little, little guy that kind of like hides, you know, he has this like little uh, main body coming out and then it kind of starts to hide that a little bit more and become more defensive. And then like it's completely hidden within its mouth and becomes the bottom jaw of Zelevate. It really rounds out the entire line very well. After that, we have Gold Lyoth, which is an evolution to Cyrox. Um, the, the, the evolution many people were hoping for. I believe this one is uh, Steel Fighting, 
now and uh, like that those kind of golden elements that i told you that i liked about cyrox are now more embodied as literal gold literal metal this definitely feels like the kind of evolution a pokemon that you know a lot of people wanted to get an evolution would get kind of like basculin in that way where we you know there's this pokemon that we everyone really wanted to evolve and then it finally evolved and it's super epic then we have petawatrol which is an evolution to kilowatrol this very much feels like a natural progression from from kilowatrol kind of giving it some more elements a few more uh, uh, uh like patterns in its in its wings i can definitely see a zap cannon firing from its little nose kind of cannon thing though in the video it said it was an electric ground type and i just I, I don't I don't know why suddenly the the shift to electric ground you know it's this very bird Pokemon like I don't see the the ground typing exhibited through the design itself or really through um like the coloration it just it, it just feels still like an electric flying type to me I know it's on the ground it's not flying in its pose right now but like I don't I, I don't I didn't really need, see the need for the ground type in this design it's a really solid design and I, it makes sense as an evolution to kilowatt roll and the name like Peta coming from kilo I, I it's awesome then we have Palamage, which at first I was like, that's just Paladin plus Mage. I'm like, oh, Magenta, Magenta, Brandon. I like that it kind of has the elements of Solympian Aegislash. It has that same shield, the thinner sword with the little kind of bubbly fairy type kind of thing that uh, Aegislash did, as well as this kind of cotton candy, like plume coming out of its helmet. Having Magenta, which is kind of like this purple, almost like pinkish blue, uh, be the kind of in between between a sword pokemon that is blue and a shield pokemon that is red i think is a nice uh, mixture of those two elements as well as it kind of having the pink and the blue in there to embody both Cyril Edge and armor rouge i can't quite remember the lore for this off the top of my head but i think it'd be cool if like maybe this was like the original like bef like you know or before there was armor rouge and Cyril Edge, like charcadet evolved into this but then there was like a certain subsection of 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 you know palamage that was that believed in the sword and then another subsection that believed in the shield and eventually they started evolving differently as time went on so that like they became a split evolution uh, that's a fun concept I, I don't know if that's what the concept was but I think it would be a fun concept after that we have Draconium which is an evolution to Diavern that Pokemon I kind of described as feeling like ultra beast like or Necrozma like maybe coming from that same dimension this Pokemon is so beautiful like I love the use of the rainbow throughout the design um, kind of referencing like a refraction of light it almost feels like Diavern you know maybe originally came from Necrozma's universe but then spent enough time in ours that like it started adopting the more or I should say ours like the Pokemon world that it started adopting more like uh, our Pokemon world traits within its evolution I mean last but not least we have Lagaladon which is it's this is kind of more of like its origin form as it were uh the the forms that like a combination of the two forms that we saw before it's just giving me Haku from Spirited Away that, that elegant like serpentine dragon um and I just like it so much I, I love the way the elements of both of the different forms were incorporated in here and it feels natural and really elegant and that was Bird Keeper Toby's Olympia region if you've made it this far thank you appreciate the watch time if you skipped just to see the heartfelt stuff I mean maybe go back and watch the video I would appreciate it all I want to say is to Bird Keeper Toby thank you Toby has been such a amazing presence in my life uh, since I got to meet him and got to know him. Uh, I got to meet him in uh, uh, 2022 at Pokemon the Pokemon World Championships in London, and he, he is this is joyous, infectious person with a work ethic like hell. Um, loves talking about content and ha like treats you like a genuine friend, um, even if they're meeting you for the first time. Um, just an absolute pleasure to be around and a pleasure to work with when we were working on the kind of uh Mewtwo clones video please go check out that video it was so much fun to do um but when we were working that it was just so fun to have our like we were in a call just discussing ideas and we we're just like oh that would be so cool and Toby think of this it, it, it was so much fun and one of the most fun like some of the most fun I've had doing content creation so again thank you to Bird Keeper Toby I'm sad to see you go but hopefully maybe in someday we can see you come back you are, are an inspiration. You changed the game, as it were, for Pokemon content creation. Your legacy will not be forgotten. And I appreciate you so much, dude. And uh, hopefully we can have another call soon to catch up. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.